Good evening, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. This is Rich again, back for your third and final video blog of the night for Monday, August 17th, 2015, around 7.23 in the evening, Belarga, Massachusetts. It was 90 degrees today in Boston. It's the first official heat wave at Boston's Logan Airport in over two years. The last time it was a heat wave officially in Boston was July 14th through July 20th. Six straight days. And it's going to be a few more and stuff. The dog days are August of here. But get used, don't get used to this because by the end of the month we'll be at Crispair again. Some news to report. It's Happy National Black Cat Day. That's about it on the news. My third and final video blog subject of the night is my personality profile. Tonight's personality profile is former Major League Baseball player Jeff Bagwell. Jeff played his entire career with the Houston Astros. Jeff was born in Boston, Massachusetts, and he grew up in Killingworth, Connecticut, and he was a sports player in high school. He went to Xavier um, Private High School, which was an all-boys high school. He played soccer and baseball. He was such a good baseball player that he got a scholarship to the University of Harford while he continued his baseball career. He was a third baseman during his, his time at U, uh, University of Harford. The, the Red Sox drafted Jeff in the fourth round of the 1989 um, Major League Baseball draft and he spent two years in the Red Sox minor league system. He was kind of a weak hitting um, third baseman plus the low to the big leagues for Jeff if he wanted to be part of the Red Sox in the big leagues was blocked by third base because Wade Boggs was starting third baseman plus Scott Cooper and Tim Nowing was in it was also third baseman in the minor league system and it, the Red Sox wanted to move um, Jeff over to play first base but Mo Vaughn was a top prospect then so Jeff had nowhere to go, and he could have been a career minor leaguer for the Red Sox. And he was traded to the Houston Astros for relief pitcher Larry Anderson in um, August of 1990. That turned out to be one of the most lost-sided trades in Major League ba Baseball history. Then Jeff moved to first base during spring training 1991 for the Astros, and he made the Astros out of spring training in 1991, and he spent his entire 15 season big league career playing first base with the Astros. And he had a hell of the career. He was 1991 Rookie of the Year in the National League. He had 12 20 home run seasons, eight 100 RBI seasons. Three times he scored 100 runs in a season. Three times he stole 20 or more bases in a season. Two times he was a member of a 30-30 club. 30 home home runs and 30 uh, uh, like stolen bases. Six times he like hit 300 in a season. Three times he won a gold glove for first base. 1994. National League Most Valuable Player. He finished in the top five and 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 out MVP voting at least two other times. Four times he made the All Star team in the National League. Three times he was a Silver Slugger award. He finished in the top ten in home runs in the National League six times. Finished in the top ten in NL RBI seven times. He was part of the Killer Bees batting lineup with Craig Biggio and Lance Berkman. Um, Jeff had most of his success in the old Houston Astrodome and stuff. He was a power hitting first baseman and stuff. He had a great batting stance and stuff. He could hit for power. He was just a big muscular guy and stuff and there were suspicions that he was linked to PEDs but he never flunked a drug test and stuff. And he, um, towards the end of his career, he had some 
um, bad shoulders and stuff and he retired after the 2005 season he played in a few post seasons 1997 1998 1999 2001 2004 2005 he only played one world series and two national league championship series he retired with the career average of 297, 445 home, 449 home runs, 1,502 RBIs, 1,517 runs, 2,314 hits, and 202 stolen bases. He holds a lot of offensive records for the Houston Astros, including home runs, RBIs, and other stuff. And his number five was retired by the Astros in 2006 and stuff, and he's been on the Hall of Fame ballot since 2011, and Jeff Bagwell has hovered around like over 50% of the vote so far, and he has five more shots to get into the Hall of Fame. I think last year he finished with like 56, 57% of the vote, and he's probably going to get in eventually he has five more chances and stuff and I think it will help next year when Mike Piazza probably gets voted into the Hall of Fame because he's Mike Piazza is one of those players who was suspicious of using PGDs and stuff but this might help Jeff Bagwell's gum chances he'll probably get into the Hall of Fame maybe 2017 he'll get in before Barry Bonds and Roger Clemens and Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa and all, all of the others who have used PEDs that's about it on Jeff Bagwell and that's about it on these video blocks. Small only two because I'm going to the game tomorrow, Red Sox game. First video blog will be about SummerSlam 1990 review for WWE pay per view in Philadelphia at the Old Spectrum. And that second video blog will be about um, J um, Craig Biggio, baseball Hall of Famer and a member of the Houston Astros. And more video blogs on the way in the coming days. This weekend, probably do four. I'm doubling up on some days with SummerSlam video blogs. Keep calm. And I'm not you look at a guy. Molly Rosenblatt, a Fox 35 rocks and has lack nice legs. And the other um, meteorologist in Orlando, Florida, Amy Swensey and Elizabeth Hot Rock too and have some smiles and nice legs as well. And in the words of uh, D Dickie Aqua, Junior Director of the Boys and Girls Club, Grey Bell the more the merrier. See you later.